Muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon to everyone. I would like to thank Naleo's president, the Honorable Alex Padilla, and my dear friend Arturo Vargas for their very kind invitation. Dear friends, Mexico is really changing. The structural reforms proposed by President Peña Nieto and approved by Congress have poised Mexico to enter a new era. These reforms will make Mexico more competitive, not only by accelerating and increasing growth, but by widening and deepening North America's integration. One of our highest priorities is to ensure North America becomes the most competitive and prosperous region in the world during this century. And that will require commitments from both sides of the border. Ultimately, however, one of the keys to success of North America will be how to recognize and understand the challenge and enormous potential of migration in our part of the world. Emigration flows from Mexico have experienced a dramatic shift in recent years. From 2005 to 10, net migration between Mexico and the United States was close to zero, and since then has only increased slightly. Actually, the total number of Mexican-born persons in the U.S. is down uh, by just below a million from its peak in 2007. Our population, like yours, is aging and there are less people willing to migrate from Mexico to the United States. Economic growth in Mexico has also played a major role in decreasing migration flows. More and more Mexicans have now entered the middle class. This new trend poses new challenges and opportunities. While our embassy and consulates will continue to serve the most vulnerable, the undocumented and early arrivals, we need to adjust our policies and programs to the new realities of our communities in the United States. Six out of every 10 of Mexicans in the US have lived, have lived in this country for over 10 years, and the Mexican-American population is growing, growing steadily. For Mexican communities to advance in the United States, we must continue to debunk stereotypes and underline the important contributions they make to this country. Mexicans in the US are hardworking, constructive entrepreneurs, and high sense of social responsibility. So many young Mexican immigrants enrich their new communities while bringing our countries together. Five Mexicans who have benefited from the DACA program were recently recognized by the White House with the Champions of Change Award for that, their outstanding community leadership. They, along with the two young Mexicans that recently accepted the National Otley Award on, be on behalf of United We Dream are just a few examples of the extraordinary courage and talent in the Mexican community in this country. In many cases, these young immigrants possess a binational identity that combines being Mexican and being American without any conflict or contradiction. As you know, it was precisely during Naleo's conference last year the Senate passed a bipartisan immigration reform bill. Today, perspectives on reform are a bit gloomy. But I'm certain that immigration reform is not a matter of if, but of when. And what the time should be is now. The hard work of immigration advocates, Hispanic organizations, and leaders like you should change this tide. Today, the contributions on immigrants and the need for immigration reform is widely acknowledged. States are moving away from anti-immigrant legislation to instead promote more welcoming laws and policies. Like in California, Mexico will continue to follow the debate and deepen its collaboration with individuals and organizations to ensure the well-being of our nationals. For the last 25 years, the government of Mexico has made continuous and systematic efforts to engage in a constructive and forward-looking relationship with Mexicans and Mexicans-Americans living in the United States. Building trustful and respectful relationships with national Hispanic organizations has been a key element of the government's strategy. At the gap, as the gap between Mexico and its communities abroad has begun to close, the way in which the government approaches Hispanic organizations has changed. We not only ask them what we can do for them, but uh, for the most, 
what we can achieve together. For us, the aim is to see for the dignity, opportunities, and certainty of Mexicans abroad. Mexico and numerous Hispanic organizations have become strategic allies with a common goal, the well-being and empowerment of Latinos in the United States. Now, our relationship is starting a new phase as we join their efforts to promote citizenship. In the case of Mexico, this undertaking is not a small feat because there are approximately 3.5 million Mexicans that hold a green card and are eligible to become American citizens. Taking into consideration that our ultimate goal is the Mexicans and Latinos in the United States fully integrate, participate and thrive in their communities, it is only natural that we support them in their path to gain a full access to civic, social, economic, and political rights. <laughs> With this objective in mind, our consulates have truly become integration centers where migrants have access to a wide array of services and programs, from matriculas consul consulares and passports to health information and financial literacy programs. We have transcendent traditional consular services in order to empower our community while helping them to stay in touch with their homeland, Mexico. This afternoon, I am pleased to announce that the Mexican government, through its embassy and network of 50 consulates, will step up our citizenship promotion efforts. It is important for Mexicans in the United States to be made aware of the advantages of becoming U.S. citizens without losing their Mexican identity or nationality. The message is clear. Taking this step is both beneficial for Mexicans in the United States and for their host communities. In this endeavor, Naleo is a key partner. For many years, we have discussed this issue, and today I'm here to commit to deepening and strengthening our long-standing relationship in the area that is of utmost importance for all of us. And now I invite Senator Denise Moreno Duceni, Ernesto De Lucas, Director of the Institute for Mexicans Abroad, and Remedios Gomez, Consul General of Mexico in San Diego, to join me in the stage to present the Otley Award. Please. <laughs> my life, I have been deeply involved with uh, Mexico-U.S. relationships, from uh, an American grandmother to a uh, deep involvement in the NAFTA negotiations to business and law enforcement. And I have been the ambassador in uh, Washington for 17 months now. When I came, I thought that I really understood everything, and I had what uh, I thought was a clear idea of how to support our community here. What I have learned instead is that we have nothing to teach you. We have everything to learn from you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Senator Denise Moreno de Cheney has strengthened the Mexico-US relationship. Her legislative work in California has promoted numerous initiatives and mechanisms that have enabled Mexico and the United States to improve their bilateral dialogue. To name a few of her accomplishments, while a member of the California State Assembly, she launched a series of binational meetings that eventually became known as the Border Legislative Conference. As an Assembly member, she worked for the establishment of a permanent office of binational border health. During her tenure in the Senate, Senator Duceni founded and chaired the Select Committee on California-Mexico Collaboration and the Colorado River. She also founded the Commission on the three Californias and sponsor the creation of the Border Research Partnership. The more fluent relationship we enjoy as a result of her dedication has brought a better cultural understanding and greater acknowledgement of the important contributions our community makes to the U.S. Without a doubt, Senator Moreno Duceni has fostered a more accurate public image of Mexico, Mexicans, and Mexican Americans. She's also well known for her commitment to advancing the interest of underserved. While she was on the San Diego Community College Board, she expanded access of all Californians to higher education, regardless of their immigration status. 
their advocacy efforts in support of immigration reform and against anti-immigration policies have been tireless. For this, I am very proud on behalf of the Mexican government and I will now bestow the Otley Award upon Senator Moreno Lucchini, a truly inspirational human being and public servant. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all so much, and especially to the ambassador, uh, my good friend, the Consul Remedios Gomez de Arnau, uh, and so many of you here. It's so exciting to be able to receive this honor in the presence of so many friends, uh, former colleagues, uh, colleagues uh, at every level that I've lived in the last too many years to tell you. Um, I, I have to just tell you, there, there is nothing more, for, when I first received the letter that told me that I would receive this award and today receiving it, the only other time that I remember the same level of emotion uh, that brings back all of your own history in life, uh, and fortunately they haven't given me enough time to tell you all of that, uh, but it, the only other moment that even begins to match uh, was actually a meeting almost 20 years ago. Uh, when President Ernesto Cedillo, who started the Mexicans Abroad program, uh, invited a small group of Latino elected officials from various states, not just California, uh, to Los Pinos. And it was the journey that leads you from, you know, grandparents who immigrated uh, as young people uh, before and around the time of the turmoil of the Mexican Revolution, uh, who followed a story that so many of our families, if you're from Los Angeles, you'll recognize this story. Uh, born in El Paso, my mother was born in El Paso, and as her brother and sister, they moved to Los Angeles during the 20s because that's where the jobs were. Uh, and she grew up in Los Angeles area. And, and for, as anybody who receives and has the sort of blessed existence and privilege that I've had um, to reach this point and receive this honor, you. All of you know, especially elected officials, know that none of you get here by yourself. Uh, and uh, in my case, there's a room full of people, many of whom are here, uh, and the list would really delay your lunch. Uh, but I have to call out a few. And first of all, and always my husband, um, Al Duceni, who for... <laughs> who first of all was the one who got me to move from Los Angeles to San Diego, uh, and, uh, but for more than 30 years has been my partner in all things, personal, political, uh, and particularly in a, a shared uh, interest and love of travel in Mexico, uh, and all things Baja California, and all things Mexico. Uh, we have traveled there both on, on vacations and, uh, and, and on official business uh, for more than 30 years, uh, and that is part of how we get here and have this appreciation. When I had a law practice, I had the opportunity to represent immigrant clients um, before the last immigration reform. And, and it, you know, you, you sort of, you get to know people and you understand it from a very personal level, knowing everybody's stories. I represented people before immigration reform, after immigration reform. Uh, and the community college board was an opportunity to advance their interest in becoming citizens. Uh, and, and learning English and all the things you had to do to accomplish uh, that goal. Uh, to then be invited to have the opportunity as a state legislator um, to visit Los Pinos, to visit with Congress people in Mexico. And it is, I hate to contradict the ambassador first thing out the gate, but it's not true that we don't learn anything from them. Um, I have learned an enormous amount uh, from an enormous number of people over many years. Uh, in Mexico, especially from Relaciones Exteriores, we don't learn diplomacy here very well. It's not something they teach us, and 
most of my experience with it has been uh, with the di diplomats and, and people who've represented uh, Relaciones Exteriores de Mexico, uh, including the consuls, and I've worked with many consuls over time, both as an attorney and later as a legislator. Um, and living in San Diego created that extra boost to understand a border region and what it means to really have what ought to be, what is in this region, and welcome to all of you to San Diego. Uh, it, if you live in an area like this, you understand it is one large metropolitan area. It is not two. The fence is fake. Nobody understands, the line, the, the birds don't know where the line is, the air quality issues don't know where the line is, the water quality issues don't know where the line is. None of those issues that affect our communities. <laughs> the health care issues, the viruses, none of them know where that fence is. And it doesn't make any sense when you start looking at it that we delay, and, and I have some special guests who are to be here today, and I think they're delayed in line, uh, unfortunately, uh, but should be here, including a, a member of Congress who's been a friend for a long time, David Perez Tejada, who we expect to be here, uh, and two former colleagues of legislatures in Baja California and Baja California Sur, uh, Armida Castro and Edna Perez Carona, who are here with me today because this is a binational region and because we are all one in trying to get our communities to be sustainable, secure, uh, and places that all of our families on both sides of the border can be raised together, and that is our strength. We hear a lot thrown about, and I was sort of offended this morning's newspaper. Somebody locally talked about security at the border in the context of, of the current crisis of the, of the Central American refugee children. And, and, and it's the security that we have and the security that we can gain is from being together. A secure Mexico is a secure United States. And until we understand that and we can communicate that message on a much broader level um, and a mission that, that we all take uh, is to ex explain that to people, a prosperous Mexico is a prosperous United States. We are working together and trading together on levels that have never been seen before in history much more as equals than in our historical past. And, and it's time now to, for us to, to take that all to the next level and help people understand this is a North American continent. It is a North American universe. It is, it is globally competitive only if we are together. It is not competitive if we try to stand alone under a fence. So as with all such honors, you, you think about your past and you, you count your blessings and your privileges um, and you have to take them also as an inspiration. I am blessed today to be, um, I, there is a life after politics, um, to, to have been uh, given an appointment at the University of California here in San Diego um, to continue this work with the Center for U.S.-Mexican Studies and to be able to do that in a next stage in a different universe but at the same time continue that same message. These um, kinds of awards not only honor you uh, but inspire you uh, to continue and I hope all of you uh, will join us continuing in that cause to build that better relationship and that closer relationship that works for all of us. We benefit, Mexico benefits. When they become citizens, they vote for Latino elected officials. It worked in California. It's how we defeated 187. It's how we elected governors that, that respected Mexico and continue to go there. So thank you all so much for being here and for uh, this honor today.